Joachim Bitterlich is a former German ambassador to NATO and the former European diplomatic and security policy advisor to the former German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. He joins us on our special coverage. Uh, Joachim, sir, thank you very much for joining us. Um, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, uh, in his sort of mini summit with the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, prior to the big one going on right now in Berlin, he said that the situation in Libya is of concern to Europe. My question to you, sir, is from a geopolitical standpoint, I was wondering if you could explain to us what this concern is. Well, I think the situation in Libya is of vital interest for the Europeans. It's not only the prejudice that the Europeans would like to avoid, let's say, a second case as in Syria. Uh, but now to take the last chance and with the agreement of Vladimir Putin, uh, Tajib Erdogan, to try to get the involved parties to a real ceasefire and from that ceasefire on trying to build up by confidence measures. And in my view, we need concrete, measurable steps, clearly a clear follow-up, not only a technical committee or a technical follow-up, no, not a technical mechanism, but a clear understanding about the follow-up of a ceasefire in order to prepare the basis for a political solution in the area. This is the key. And the difficult situation for the German government as the mediator, as the neutral mediator in this case. Uh, you said that, uh, that they wanted to avoid a second case like we saw in Syria. Do you mean that the Europeans want to avoid a, a second wave of mass migration to the continent? It's not only a question of mass migration. It's a question of, let's say, peace or stability around the Mediterranean, which is the European immediate neighborhood. The Europeans have a keen interest in peace and stability around the Mediterranean. This is clear. There is a certain interest in oil, but the Europeans are not depending on oil from Libya, on the other hand. But uh, you see, the Europeans are perhaps more conscious today about that situation because, lastly, of the migration crisis from 2015 on, on a certain, let's say, sensitivity of this question. But on the other hand, I think it's of vital interest of the Europeans to get peace and stability in their immediate neighborhood around them. And Libya is not, let's say, 5,000 kilometers away. It's just around the other side of the Mediterranean. Fair enough. And we have to understand at the same time the interest of Turkey in this case. It's normal. And the Russians are present. It's OK. Fine. Fine with us. Uh, and we have to build upon, let's say, the willingness of the parties. And there is the question, I think, where your diplomatic correspondent has spoken about certain doubts from the Libyan capital. Uh, Mr. Bitterlich, I want to ask you this. If this is so important for the Europeans, if, it, if this is of big concern to the Europeans, then why are we seeing them so divided on this issue? Well, this is the past, again, who is playing a certain role. Look at the whole migration policy, where is not a real agreement among Europeans. We have been trying to build up such an agreement among the Europeans uh, since a certain time, since 2015-16. But still now, we have certain differences. When you look at Libya, the origin has been the intervention of the, the French and the British, supported by the Americans. Uh, and since that time, we have this today rotten situation in Libya itself, uh, and with uh, an interference with regard to Tunisia in its neighborhood, and with the, even the Egyptians worried about the development in their immediate neighborhood and in the West. And therefore, I think, as the Europeans have been thinking since, let's say, the beginning of this century in, let's say, the aim of a peaceful neighborhood towards the east and towards the south, you see this, for example, in the new interests of the Europeans towards Africa, I think it's of vital interest of the Europeans to get involved, to play a certain role. And I think Mrs. Merkel is able here to build a certain bridge even between diverging interests among Europeans, even with regard to diverging interests with regard to Turkey. 
which is playing, trying to play a positive role, on the other hand, a certain dangerous role when you look at the situation about gas in the eastern Mediterranean space. But there, I think, uh, there is a certain common interest, and even for Turkey, there is a certain interest to get the Europeans there involved, to get them with them. Uh, the Turkish president has been speaking about, let's say, an interest of the Europeans in supporting the Turkish intervention. I say yes, but, on the other hand, uh, perhaps Turkey would be ready to go there under uh, EU command. Why not? Why not? Because we have been to reflect about what I call the next steps. And it's nice to have a marvelous political declaration of now 55 points, as we see through the press this morning. Uh, but the decisive point is the implementation. And the implementation, it's excellent to have the support of Turkey and of Russia, because they are both parties involved in the area. It would be extremely important to get the Americans in on board. And I've read okay, Mr. there has been a certain past of Haftar with the Americans. Mr. But Ambassador, it, we need the assistance of all people involved. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, I want to ask you: Do, do you feel that, uh, that the European interest was sort of so all of a sudden uh, became uh, higher, was sparked uh, after the fact that Turkey declared uh, its its military cooperation with the internationally recognized government of Tripoli? Yes, this has been, let's say, a new step in this phases. Uh, I think it's right, uh, and I think. Uh, Turkey has a certain real, not only a moral, but a political responsibility. But for me, the difficulty will, will be how to get about a, let's say, a minimum of confidence between the Haftar side, which is controlling most of the country, and the government recognized by the UN. How to bring about a minimum of confidence in this area. Okay. Some people say, well, it will have to, who will take over at the end, and then looking for international recognition. But how to get, let's say, a, a ceasefire and then, let's say, stabilize the situation for the population in Libya, first of all, uh, reduce the danger even for neighbors, reduce foreign interference in this field, and in order to bring them together to look for, let's say, a peaceful national solution in this field. What would be success really for you, sir? What, what, what would yes. be success for you coming out of Berlin? The success for me depends whether this declaration of Berlin has, first of all, the support of all the parties invited, because they are all important, they are all involved to some extent. At the same time, the key is for me the implementation. The implementation, what you call next steps. What will be the measures of control, the measures of step-by-step uh, -step implementation in order to get what I call a durable ceasefire first and then to come down towards, let's say, normal life in Libya and then coming towards, let's say, a, a political solution of this internal conflict. Because the situation as it is, okay. is to some extent still partly out of control. Ambassador Joachim Bitterlich, the former European diplomatic and security policy advisor to Chancellor Helmut Kohl, thank you very much for joining us here on our special coverage. I do appreciate it.